Hello everyone, I'm Eternal Flame here. Welcome to the JJK26 free chapter review of the Shinjuku Showdown Part 35. Gage continues his perfect naming streak once again, and he is right back into his element because that is a perfect name. And this is one of the better chapters, like one of the really, really good chapters. I'm really hyped to talk about this and read this one to you guys because this is a really, really good chapter that has a lot of cool things that happen in it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Also, my voice sounds weird is because I just woke up, so it should be getting better as we would continue to record. So the chapter immediately starts out by showing us the result of the Hollow Purple from the outside, as Yuta Akotsu's incredibly tiny barrier gets shattered by the Hollow Purple. And we get to see just how much Shinjuku has been destroyed by the ongoing battle up to this point, as Sakuna himself is launched back, as Sakuna thinks he pulled it off. As powerful as Purple may be, he's still not fully comfortable using it. Even his own domain barrier was destroyed. So yeah, this basically implies that Sakuna somehow tanked the Hollow Purple. This could be through domain amplification, or it could be through his durability, we don't know. But it's basically implied by Sakuna that the reason why it didn't do as much damage as it should have is because Yuta is not really comfortable using the body yet, which does make a lot of sense. Yuta literally just got this body like a few minutes ago, and this is his first time using it against Sakuna, so cut him some slack. However, Sakuna doesn't have a moment to think, as at that same moment, Yuji, Yuta, and Toto all rush at Sakuna, at least attempting to rush at him to continue the battle. As Toto yells to Yuta to spam as many Hollow Purples as possible. After all, Toto can just teleport them out the way, which is absolutely insane that because of the Viber Slap, Toto's new teleportation speed would allow them to move out the way of a Hollow Purple. And keep in mind, Toto should have no idea that Yuta codes his Hollow Purple is slower than Gojo's, which means he thinks this could be the case with Gojo's as well. However, unfortunately for Yuta, the narrator begins to talk. As the narrator says, Immediately after the use of Domain Expansion, Ryoman Sukuna has once again fallen into a state in which his curse technique is painstakingly difficult to use. Meanwhile, we then see Yuta Akotsu fall down to the ground. As the narrator then says, Kenjaku's curse technique copied by Akotsu was also burned out after using his Domain Expansion. Before his the five minutes had passed, the use of Kenjaku's technique was halted. As Yuta thinks to himself, damn it, Rika not haunting this body means copy is no longer mine, makes limitless the burnt out technique. I thought I would still be able to use Kenjaku's. Was there some trick behind Kenjaku being able to use his technique immediately following a domain expansion? I don't take any information like that when I copied his technique. I'll at least maintain the barrier for their sake. So let me break this one down real fast. Yuda Kotsu is still able to use Kenjaku's technique just barely and it's incredibly difficult for him to use. It means Yuda Kotsu is not dead yet because the 5 minute timer has not passed, but he still is there. He's just unable to really move his technique and move his body at all, mainly because his technique is on burnout, which means Kenjaku's technique is on burnout at the current moment. Similar to how using a domain expansion makes Sakuna's technique painstakingly difficult to use, and since the technique is what's keeping Yuta alive and ability to actually use Gojo's body at all, it is painstakingly difficult to actually move the body around. However, this does make me speculate if Kenjaku had figured out the RCT brain trick that Gojo had figured out in the middle of his battle against Sukuna even before Gojo had pulled it off, which would also explain how Sukuna was able to immediately explain it because he had seen Kenjaku do it in the past, and that's how he already knew about it because we know it's probably not to do with his technique, so it's probably something Kenjaku could do with Reverse Curse Technique or a Binding Vow that Kenjaku made. It could be one or the other, but I'm leaning closer to him just having figured out the same RCT trick that Gojo had figured out. As Toto and Sakuna both realize in that moment that Yuta has reached his limit, before Sakuna goes in for a Black Flash right on the Vibra Slap, and Toto tanks it like a champion. Now the Vibra Slap gets broken, but man, he actually lives through that, which is absolutely insane. So yeah, this is confirmation that Toto got a massive durability amp, because there is no way, even with how weakened Sakuna's output is right now, that Toto in Shibuya would have taken a Black Flash from Sakuna, if I'm being honest with you guys. As Toto acknowledges the fact that even in a situation like this, his offense doesn't let up, and here Toto was getting distracted by Akotsu, and he won't let that opening happen again. Mainly because Sakuna will not let him have an opening and not go for it. However, that was when Yuji landed a punch right on Sakuna's face, as Toto says, way to make us wait, I'm not done hogging the spotlight yet. And that punch also makes Sakuna cough up a bit of blood. And we see Toto use his massive big brain to do something absolutely genius, mainly because he takes advantage of Yuda Kotsu's domain shards that were still on the battlefield, as he smacks the Viber Slap against his head in order to trigger it, before using the domain shards to make Yuji swap around with all of them, basically making it look like Yuji had just figured out how to clone himself. 
However, Yuji ended up faking out Sukuna because he made it look like he was going to go for a Black Flash, but then he held his palm open and used Dismantle on Sukuna's body as he declares that he'll do this as many times as it takes at Wake Up Fushiguro. However, something even more insane gets revealed from the fact that Yuji can use Dismantle like this, as Sakuna thinks to himself he's selectively choosing the target of his technique. He's firing Dismantle after Dismantle directly at the barrier between mine and Fushiguro Megami's soul. He's made a binding vow to make his strikes more effective at tearing my soul from the body. Yeah, that's right, Yuji now has access to a dismantle that is capable of cutting the barrier in between the soul, which is absolutely insane. This is a brand new way Yuji can use Shrine that is massively more powerful than his usage before, and clearly quite potent as well considering the reaction Sakuna has, since there's more than just soul damage involved, he actually looks quite damaged from it. So Yuji was probably getting adjusted to Shrine during the time where Yuta, Kotsu, and Sakuna were battling in the barrier or something, and that's also probably when he made the Binding Vow, but we have no idea what that binding vow is and I'm really curious to see what it is but I'm also really terrified to see what it is mainly because binding vows that don't have an answer might become something that bite Yuji later also I need to say this I am surprised that one of my predictions ended up coming true because really recently I've been doing a series called what if Yuji awoke shrine early and in that series I literally just gave him a soul dismantle and I wasn't really sure if a soul dismantle would work but now Gege has literally shown that it would work and I'm really proud of myself for predicting that one also, I'm just really happy a lot more characters are actually using Binding Vows now because that was one of my biggest problems I've had with the entire Shinjuku Shodown, which is not as many characters as I think should be are not using Binding Vows, and now the characters are. So yeah, I'm happy now. As Sakuna then thinks to himself, if I continue taking these blows, while he looks like he's about to vomit something up, he vomits up what could be either Tengen or a finger. It's really unclear what he vomits up, but I kind of think it's a finger mainly because we see two of them, but at the same time I've heard interpretations that it's Tengen, I've heard interpretations that it's Tengen and a finger, it's not really clear, but I think it is at least one thing is a finger. As Sakuna does think to himself, I won't be able to maintain this body and I'll lose, however... As Yuji then rushes at Sakuna using cleave on a pillar that Sakuna was on and standing on, but Sakuna was able to jump out the way, move behind Yuji, and punch him into a wall. However, it was clear that he was trying to blitz Yuji, but he didn't because Yuji ended up blocking the strike. As Sakuna thinks to himself, if I simply avoid those blows, they'll have no other moves as effective. So basically to explain what had just happened in that previous scene, I think Sakuna's soul connection is getting so weak with Megami thanks to all the damage that Yuji had been doing that he is forcing S Megami's body to reject Sakuna's fingers, but at the same time Sakuna is just putting them right back in, however Yuji is going to need to weaken it more and more, and also this feels like a really heavy perfect cell type scene if I'm being honest. Which really just shows how dangerous Yuji actually is, especially considering that the Yuji is capable of using Dismantle on the soul by this point, or at least a barrier in between the soul. So just to imagine what it would be like to actually fight him, Yuji just got a massive upgrade. As Toto then makes a binding vow in that moment, that binding vow being the Vibra Slap would no longer be recognized as his new left hand which by ascension allowed him to massively extend the range of the swap, as Sakuna immediately looked at Toto, preparing to be swapped, but there was no swap this time. Or at least he believed there was no swap this time, because up high in the air with some of the domain shards, Hana Karesu was high up in the air, preparing to fire off a Jacob's Ladder. As the narrator then says, through the use of a binding vow, the range of Toto's technique has been extended. Before it's then, we head into a flashback. As a conversation between Hana Karesu and Yuta Akotsu begins, with Hana saying, Our role ends once I dispel Gojo Satoru's seal. What about Megumi? What will happen to him? As he then apologizes to Angel and Hana that they are going to need to rely on her in the end. As Yuta Akotsu then says, Just as I said earlier, it's perfectly fine for you to stay out of the battle. Even if my domain is destroyed, we'll make sure there is no need for you to fight. I'd like for you to fire Jacob's Ladder as the finishing blow. We'll take an all-or-nothing gamble once more and attempt to split Sakuna and Megami's souls. At the very end, we'll make the most of a strong point of my copy technique. As Hannah looks a little bit confused by what he means by a strong point. Which that strong point is that since Yuta Akotsu is capable of copying techniques, everybody is focused on the copier. Everyone is focused on Yuta Akotsu because Yuta Akotsu could have a massive amount of techniques, and no one knows the amount that he would have, which results in everybody forgetting the original user. However, the real advantage of having copy is the fact that they can have two people play the same card, rather than just one person. 
The true advantage of Copy is that everybody is so focused on Yuta Akotsu that people were going to ignore the original user of the technique and think that they no longer have to deal with the technique mainly because Yuta Akotsu is out of the picture. Before it is then, Hannah fires a maximum output Jacob's Ladder right down onto the field. As the end of the chapter note says, At the 11th hour, they play their trump card. Where will this battle to the death go next? Break next week. And that was the chapter this week. There is quite a lot to talk about because this chapter, in my opinion, is just a really, really good chapter. I absolutely love this chapter, like I said in the beginning of the video. Number one, Yuji's brand new dismantle ability that he just awakened is absolutely insane because of the fact that he can target the barrier in between the souls and he's also able to just do that and he almost forced Sakuna to throw up the fingers. He just needs to do a little bit more damage and he would be good. And now Sakuna is basically on a path where he needs to avoid all the Yuji's hits no matter what. This entire fight has been incredibly hype. I love Toto's big brain usage of his technique and the fact that even though the Vibra Slap is destroyed, instead of just using the instrument, he's just going to use it to smack it against his head. And the binding value he made is incredible because it just makes a lot of sense considering we already know that exchanging a limb would allow you to survive things that you couldn't survive before. It also gives more Kenjaku lore about how Kenjaku could have survived that and Kenjaku theories. Even though I know some people are likely going to take this as Kenjaku being special, I just think it's it's because Kenjaku figured out the RCT brain trick, but I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comment section down below. And then Hannah finally landed out this massive Jacob's Ladder. I don't know if this is going to be the final move or not, but I do think that this is going to cause a massive amount of damage to Sakuna no matter what. However, I am hyped to see what Gege is going to cook after break week because this is going to be really hype and I am really excited for this one. But that's about everything from me. Hope you all have a good day. I'm going to see you all later. Peace out. Bye.